this is the Raman spectroscopy setup. You can see it's a fiber optic setup. The sample container is here. This is the long optical fiber. It's called a bifurcated fiber because there's a there's a source fiber and then there's the detector fiber. And those are bound up into one fiber that goes into the probe. In here is the sample container. This top has a little notch in it, as you can see, and it goes into a pin. And so you have to line it up to get that lid to slide on. You turn it so that it latches. There's a shutter on the probe here, and when this turn to see the red dot, then the laser is able to exit the probe. So that's a safety feature. You can leave the shutter open while using the sample container, um, but when at the end of the day, you need to turn it off like that. <clears throat> this is the laser. It's a neodymium YAG diode laser. You can see here the indicator that laser is on. This is a safety shutoff switch. This is the switch that turns the laser on. There's a safety interlock back here, which is the key. The key needs to be turned to on. And to uh, turn the whole thing off, you turn off the switch, turn off the key, and then you unplug the, the laser from the wall. The spectrometer is from Ocean Optics. It's QE Pro. Uh, USB connection to the computer, and then also the power connection to the wall. So that's the, the uh, Raman system setup, the fiber optic Raman setup. Okay, so this is the OceanView software. Once the, the, the uh, Raman spectrometer is hooked up to the computer, you double click the icon. It should identify the device. Okay, so it, it's found the, the device. One thing you want to do to set up this uh, spectrometer for Raman spectroscopy is to hit this spectroscopy application wizard. Now, yesterday I ran into a problem. It only had absorbance, transmission, reflectance, and fluorescence. It didn't have any of these other features. And it said because it was the, the light software. So if, you're, uh, if you get that error, I actually had to go to the C drive to start this software so that it would not be in the, in the light version. But we have the Raman option, so we're going to select that, click it once. It asks if we use the active acquisition that we're collecting now, and that's that's what we want. So we hit next. <clears throat> so notice we don't have any signal here. So we want to put in a sample. Uh, I use a seed and I trial almost always, um, but we can use any of the samples for today. Let's put benzene in here. Okay, so I removed the sample cap. Here's the benzene vial. It's a glass vial. Fits right into the insert. I line up this notch with this pin and push down until it slips in and then I turn it a little bit to hold it in place. This has a shutter on the on the laser probe. And I'm going to turn it to where the red dot is showing and now laser light is hit our, hitting our sample. We come over here and we see now we see some Raman peaks in the spectrum. Now they're very very small and so we want to integrate for a long period of time so that we collect that signal. Right now we're collecting a spectrum every 100 milliseconds. And so I want to go to something on the order of 2,000 milliseconds or two seconds. And so we'll watch our signal now. And our goal is to get it up around 18,000 counts. And so that looks very good. If it goes too high, then you'll get an error message that says it's saturated. Let's just do the 3000 and we'll see that. If you look down here, it says spectrometer is saturated. So we're counting for too long. So we're going to back it down to 2000 milliseconds. <clears throat> And it says spectrometer is in range, so the error state has been cleared. Okay, so we have a good strong signal. We're going to hit next. Now we want to get a background so we can subtract the noise from our detector. This is done very easily by closing on the Raman probe. You can see the, the red dot. We can just close that shutter. Now we're only collecting signal from our detector. We don't have any light hitting the detector. 
So this is just background noise from our detector. I'm going to click this big button. It doesn't look like a button, but it is. You click that and that's going to store that background in the computer. And it will take all of our spectra and subtract this background. Now in order to convert this x-axis from wavelength to Raman shift, we need to put in the wavelength of our laser, which is 532, and hit apply. And what that will do now is to set up a Raman experiment where the x-axis is in wave numbers of Raman shift. So it takes the light that's coming in, like at 610 nanometers, and, sub and, and converts that to wave numbers, and subtracts the wave number value of our 532 nanometer laser. And that difference is the vibrational frequencies of the transitions. So if you'll notice down here we have Raman shift. Our full spectral range goes from a little bit less than zero up to 4500 wave numbers. And we don't have any signal because the shutter is still closed. So open the shutter. And our signal is off scale. So up here, you see this button here, scale graph to fill window. I'm going to click that one. And there's our benzene Raman spectrum. Very simple to set up, but if you've never been through the wizard, it might, be, might seem daunting. But that's all that you need to do to get the Raman system up and running. <clears throat> now you're free to change out the vials and, and run your regular samples. Procedure, you can take this cap, turn it a little bit till it pops up, take it off. This thing is spring-loaded, and it keeps the laser light from coming out of the sample holder. So we can leave the shutter open and just take our vial out. Put in the next vial. Put it down, and we get a different spectrum. This is a and I trial. Now, each different molecule has a slightly different Raman cross-section, a different intensity. And so if you wanted these peaks to be a little bit higher, need to come up here and, and look at the um okay there it is yeah exactly it was part of this view i don't know how it works now but i don't know that's it okay so i can make this 3000 was the point and then you can bump up so yeah, if the CETA nut trial peak was too small, you could change the integration time. To get to this acquisition group window, you may have to go back to the view tab, which is just the raw spectrum versus wavelength, and then check that acquisition group window and you'll be able to adjust these parameters. If you wanted to decrease the noise in the spectrum, you could increase this boxcar width. And what that does is it just takes a single pixel and averages the adjacent pixels. So it gets rid of pixel to pixel uncertainty. Scans to average, you could also reduce noise that way, but I've found that the boxcar width for averaging three to five points can be very effective. This electric dark is good at just is subtracting the dark signal from that previous uh, dark spectrum that we collected. And I think that's it. That's enough to get you started.